Welcome to the City Cares Small Business Academy, presented by City Trends and the law firm of Cy Farth Shaw. In this six episode series, we explore what it takes to start a successful business designing or manufacturing products for retail sale. Welcome to the seventh bonus session in the 2021 City Cares Small Business Academy. Getting in the door, a vendor roundtable. Our guests today are David Walker of Positivity Water and Bobby Johar of Bobin's Trading Company. Welcome to the City Trends Small Business Academy. We have today a roundtable with two of our vendors. We have David Walker of Star Walker Industries, supplier of Positivity Water, and we have Bobby Johar of Bobin's Trading Company, a longtime supplier of apparel for City Trend stores. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, thanks for sharing your expertise today. Pleasure to be here. And same here. Thanks, Mary. All right, great. Well, I'd love to have you all introduce yourselves uh, briefly to the audience. Uh, Bobby, would you care to go first? Sure. Um, I go back with City Trends all the way back to 1996 uh, when I started my company. And uh, back then, there was no City Trends. It was Allied Department Stores. And I believe there was a total of 50 doors back then, maybe a little under shade, under 50. Um, and we started at the Magic Trade Show. And we, I was doing this Japanimation microfiber shirts. Uh, that was a big rage back that time. And uh, Tom Glisson, who was a men's buyer uh, and may soul rest in peace, a good friend of mine as well, we became good friends later on, tested an order of, I think it was 2,400 units. And the goods hit the stores and they blew out in week one and the rest is history. And we, we continue to build upon it. And now we do a full range of... Uh, Tops, bottoms, knits, wovens, denims, twills, you name it, we do it for all size ranges and not just men, ladies, kids, everything, you know. And it's been, a, it's been quite a ride since then. David? Uh, yeah, thanks. That's a great story, Bobby. You go all the way back. Yeah, I, I go all the way back to January with City Trends. <laughs> we got both so, ends of the spectrum, basically. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, we uh, essentially sell positivity in a bottle, <laughs> literally. Um, but uh, we are a uh, um, positivity alkaline water. It's a 9.5 pH uh, alkaline brand. People in the health, fitness, or bowel illnesses tend to like an alkaline diet. And one of the things they have with their alkaline diet is alkaline water. And we provide uh, that uh, 9.5 pH high alkaline water for those people. Um, City Trends and Positivity, which is one of our subsidiaries of Star Walker Industries, we actually are in the bottled water uh, bottling and distribution business. And we've developed Positivity about four years ago. Uh, City Trends was looking to uh, enter into the um, beverage market and particularly room temperature beverage. And if you haven't had alkaline water, I have a joke inside the company that you should have it room temperature because it's like putting A1 on a steak sauce when you put it, I mean, A1 steak sauce on a good steak when you put it in the fridge and drink it cold. Good water drinks room temperature. And so uh, we talked to them, we sent them cases and we had a, a discussion about the best way to offer positivity in the city trends locations. We started off first with a hundred stores to test it and now we're in 500 stores. So uh, it's been an excellent partnership. It's been very fun trying to navigate um, the city trends maze of uh, connections. <laughs> there is an end. If you start in the maze, there is an end. Uh, but, you know, getting to meet people along the way and really just keeping a positive attitude about the relationship has been fun. And I'm happy to share any details that I can with anybody who's interested. Okay, great. Uh, so let me let me hear a little bit more about your backgrounds. Uh, how what were you doing before y'all were doing uh, the, the the business that you're in right now? Um, can I go first? Yeah, go ahead, Bobby. Okay, so um, my family is was in the ladies' business, but they were doing Missy wear, nothing to do with city trends. They were in the department store business. So I wanted to do something on my own. I did not want to be a part of the family business. So I chose to launch a menswear line in 1996. And at the first trade show, uh, I ended up landing uh, City Trends Allied Department stores and a few other accounts and uh, never got to finish my uh, MBA. <laughs> uh, did my bachelor's in finance and um, was supposed to work on Wall Street, but I guess wasn't in the books. 
So, and no regrets there. Uh, it's been a great, great, great experience. And um, it's now I can say it's an officially in my blood, the garment business, you know. So I love every aspect of even now with all this ocean freights and all this craziness that's going on. Not a fun time, but still, you know, it's, 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 it's an adventure every day. So it, 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 it's, it's been awesome. And David, your background might be a little bit more like mine. Yes, correct. Uh, I'm actually a business attorney. I've been practicing corporate law for 23 years now. I have my own practice here in Atlanta. I focus exclusively on startup and small business owners. I help them start their business, buy and sell businesses, raise capital. Uh, I don't do any bad news law, like divorce or criminal, DUI, personal injury. Uh, so I've been to court like eight times in 23 years. <laughs> I don't like anything about the court. I don't even like the way the parking lot smells. <laughs> so uh, I focus in on transactional. Um, about seven years ago, I went to a bottle water plant with a client of mine who's a group of engineers who sells manufacturing equipment to bottled water companies. And I went to a bottled water plant and I fell in love. I have an engineering degree from Michigan <laughs> that I haven't really used for engineering. I've used for analytical reasons, but when I went to the plant, I wasn't intimidated and I just fell in love with the machinery and everything about bottled water. And in order to um, get into bottled water um, bottling, you essentially have to start with distribution of brands. So we started with developing a brand of um, Integrity, which is a spring and purified brand that we sell. Uh, that would be in a bottle like this. And uh, four years ago, we developed um, a Positivity um, which is our 700 milliliter sports cap brand. And um, the, the idea behind Starwalker Industries, however, is we're building a plant. We believe that we can build a local plants in local communities that would allow you to buy your water locally, uh, drink it locally, and then we're creating incentives to bring the bottle back. So we're offering a uh, 10 cent bottle re uh, return incentives to keep the bottle back because what I found out in the bottled water industry is if you keep all the plastic together it's actually very valuable it's called recycled PET if you put it into a recycling bin it's less valuable because it gets basically diluted with other recycling materials so Starwalker Industries overall is building uh, local bottled water plants for local communities in a closed loop system okay all right so uh, we've all seen the uh, labels on on our bottles of uh, talking about a deposit in some states, and that may become a nationwide thing again. That'd be very interesting to, to see. Yeah, we're trying to do it from a corporate level. We're trying to incentivize people from a corporate uh, perspective uh, to try to, and then again, it's focusing on local communities. We, we believe all wa bottled water should be processed locally. You know, you should drink mm -hmm. your water locally. If you understood a lot about purification of about water, you realize it doesn't really make sense to ship it across the country, but it's a long journey. It's a journey that I'm excited about. And uh, my favorite movie is the Shawshank Redemption. So I take my time on everything. <laughs> just, just keep moving one teaspoon at a time. Well, yeah, and uh, you're right that I don't know for anything about bottled water filtration, but it does seem like a kind of silly idea to burn a gallon of gas to get a gallon of water. That's exactly right. And uh, we're going to fix that problem together. So was there a point in all of this where the two of y'all each felt like this is the moment? This is me going out on the limb, putting some risk into it and, and changing course and what I'm doing in my career. Uh, Bobby? Yeah, sure. I mean, like I said, uh, in 96, when I started, it was just... Um... I didn't think I was going to be doing it. I just want to give it a shot and see where it goes. And the year one, um, you know, it was revenues were very small. It was, it was, it took a while to build everything up and there were a lot of doubts. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and there were times I thought I'm a finest major. <laughs> what am I doing over here? You know? And, uh, but you know, patience and perseverance, you know, you just kept going at it. And um, like I said, when the result, you start seeing some of the results, you start seeing some of the sell throughs, sell throughs, and you see that there's, you know, there's positive news. You keep just building on it, on it, and and again, I gotta be very honest. Yeah, I've been doing this for what 25 years. Uh, it's a roller coaster for sure. It's not like it wasn't just a straight curve that from '96 just took off and kept going up. There are a lot of ups and downs, and uh, no matter what business is, it is, there's always gonna be ups and downs. But you gotta stay positive. You gotta look at the bright side of things and um you fix the wrongs at, and make them right as you go along and it's a learning experience um honestly i don't think any of my 
uh, undergrad degrees told me anything how to do when you do your own business. You you make your own rules as you go along and um, you create your own uh, ways. And uh, there's going to be ups and downs for sure. I would, I would tell everybody straight up. And there were a lot of doubtful moments, not just one. There were a lot of doubtful moments. But, you know, you, you struggle through them and then, you know, you get to the other side. And that's what, exactly what happened with me. Yeah, I certainly know my defining moment. Uh, I went to church and the pastor challenged the congregation. He took a whiteboard and he literally drug it out to the parking lot outside the building. And he says, today we're going to post our most outrageous goal in life and pray up to the universe and God on your most outrageous goal. And I saw people post things like, you know, win the lottery or buy a big house or get a puppy or <laughs> whatever the case might be. And I had to think, I was like, what is my outrageous goal in life? Like, you know, what do I really want? And I want a Super Bowl trophy. <laughs> I want one really, really bad. And I can't get one as a player or a coach, but I can still own an NFL team. So I wrote down own an NFL team and win the Super Bowl trophy because having a team without a trophy is not fulfilling. <laughs> so <laughs> wrote it down, posted it. And really, you know, when you write down your goals, you start to think about, you know, if that's 2 million miles in one direction, am I even walking in that direction? And I took an assessment of my life and I thought, man, these owners aren't lawyers. They hire lawyers. <laughs> Dave, you've seen a lot of business models over the years. Which ones make sense to you? And that's sort of where the bottled water came into play. And I went to the bottled water plant. Uh, but so much so during that moment, I've developed that philosophy here in my office with my staff is, you know, every day in my children even is really trying to figure out what is your outrageous goal in life? And are you moving in that direction? every day and it doesn't matter if you're you're not going to get there tomorrow but you got to try to move this much every day and uh, if everybody keeps that outrageous goal in mind it sort of keeps things in perspective because like bobby mentioned there's so many ups and downs in the intermediary steps to get there <laughs> i mean i don't have a team yet so i still have a long way to go but there's steps along the way and you have to be willing to understand that there's a much bigger picture that you're striving for and not get lost on those temporary down days and not get too high on those good days. <laughs> Very true. Very good. Bobby, talking about steps, uh, you had mentioned uh, getting into trade shows yes. uh, early in the game. Can you tell me a little bit about that process? So, um, yeah. So at that time, uh, back in 96, uh, you know, I looked into it, what's the best men's trade show. And I asked around and everybody said magic trade show. And they had just made the move from uh, Los Angeles to Las Vegas at that time. And uh, and it was quite small back in the days. Uh, so we went there. It was actually quite reasonable too. Later on, they became it became very expensive later on and kind of lost its meaning in the last few years. I stopped going. Up, I, I think I went for like 22 years twice a year to Vegas. So I did 44 trips to Vegas. Uh, I think I'm done with Vegas for a while now. But the last four or five years I haven't gone because the trade shows kind of went downhill. But I think they're going to come back now again because of the whole COVID business. So that they, might, they may become vital again. But I would strongly advise any young entrepreneur who's starting out of the business, the best way to make connection is through trade shows. So that's where you can meet people uh, under one roof. You can meet different buyers. And also, a lot of times, it's very hard to get through to buyers. You know, we all know that, you know, it's, it's, it's not that easy because they get bombarded with phone calls and emails for inter uh, appointments all the time. So it's, it's, it's a better chance of you catching them in a trade show, getting to show them your product line, introduce yourself. And I always found that uh, that's like the stepping stone uh, in this business is, is to get into a good trade show and say hello and hi to the buyers and the management because they're all walking around. And, and that's how I did. And that's that's what helped me a lot. In our last session with uh, Lisa Powell, uh, she had mentioned uh, quite a bit, uh, differentiating that product is so important. Yep. Uh, and whether you're doing that in person or trying to do it, uh, pitching by email or phone, right. uh, it, you got you to gotta be able to express what makes your product it's so much Stand more, up. yeah, exactly. It's so much more clear when you have the sample hanging in the booth. They can touch and feel the product as opposed to, you know, doing it over the email and trying to convince them, hey, listen, my product is good. Why don't you come by and see me in the showroom or, you know, so, or can I come by and see you? Uh, but when they actually see it and they like the product, it tells a whole different story. Yeah, it, it makes it a lot easier. So I, I, I do believe uh, it's, it's, it's a very strong stepping stone.
Uh, and, and that's that's not just true for apparel, uh, David. Uh, I know you've uh, supplied positivity water to our headquarters here. I've seen the bottles uh, floating around, had a few of them myself. Uh, great product. Uh, but it is, it helps to, to get that tactile feel for, for what you've got there, uh, or, or in, in your particular case, to literally taste it, <laughs> uh, to, to get that going. What do you do, David, to uh, get your product uh, in front of potential buyers? Well, a lot of times you have to listen. Um, you just have to listen to what makes sense for other people. Too many times, even when you're in a business, you're so much in the sale mode and you're trying to always push something in front of someone, but you have to listen to what their problem is. You have to listen to what are the things the buyer's going through and really build relationships from that and sometimes be more helpful than sellful, right? And it's just really, you know, trying to keep your ear to the ground. One of the things we do here at Positivity is we have touch points with anybody who engages with us, whether it's through Instagram or through email, et cetera, we create a system in which we're going to have a touch point to them to listen, because if people take the energy to reach out to you in any sort of way, touch your bottle, buy your bottle, touch to you on email, we try to return that energy. And sometimes it goes somewhere and sometimes it goes nowhere, but we try to listen to what the reasons why they might be motivated into reaching out to us. And that's no different than what happened with uh, City Trends is that we listened to some of the things that they were facing. They really wanted to have an impact on the uh, black owned business market and talking to some black owned businesses. And they understood about shelf space. So for example, we set up, so we shipped out uh, stands to all of the locations so that we could be more accommodating to them because trying to find shelf space and say, move these other things out the way so you can put our bottle uh, really, we know it's going to be a more challenge for them. So we said, okay, we hear you. We understand the issue. And this is the solution that we're going to provide. And I think oftentimes so many people sell so much to buyers that they're not really paying attention to what the buyer is looking for and what some of their things are. So what I would say to a lot of startup businesses or a lot of businesses that are looking to do business with companies like City Trend is just listen to your contact and, and they'll tell you. If you listen, they'll tell you what they're looking for and the things that is a challenge for them. And then you try to make it happen from that perspective. All right, great. So, so talking about startups and getting started at the very beginning, uh, it sounds like both of y'all had some great resources to draw on in terms of expertise and people you could talk to, consult with. Uh, who would you say you would consider mentors in, in your uh, startup process? Uh, Bobby, if you'll go first. Um, there's not a one particular uh, name that comes to mind, but you know there were a few different people that uh, helped me tremendously by advising me, uh, you know, uh, giving me sound advice. So it's not one particular person, but you know, you you gotta you gotta listen to the advice and you gotta really digest it and uh, understand where it's coming from and then um, take it with a grain of salt and, and, and follow through with it, you know? Um, so there's not one particular person, I would say, to be honest with you. It's just, uh, it was a f few different people. I was fortunate to be in their company that gave me good sound advice and I built upon it. And again, it, it wasn't easy. It was a tedious process, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but you know, you have to have patience and you have to, have to um, be positive. I know they like that. <laughs> I could see the I could see the flood coming in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so yeah, you have to be positive, and you know that's that's more than half the battle right there. So mm -hmm. uh, so like I said, it was a, I was fortunate enough to have a few good people who gave me sound advice who'd been in the business, and um, and I listened to it. As mm -hmm. simple as it sounds, uh, I I did listen to it, and I took it to heart, and that helped me tr uh, tremendously. And now here you are giving back, giving your own advice. Yeah, it's right. my pleasure. If I can help one person, I, I'll be more than happy to I'll consider it a great thing. And David, uh, who, yeah. is, who is the village who helped you? Yeah, and uh, I, I think the layup would be the business attorney, right? Like, oh yeah, everyone needs a business attorney. No, I, I don't think that's the right answer. I think the right answer is other business owners. So understanding, of course, that only two to 8% of Americans make their money solely off their business. Most people, 92 to 98 percent of Americans are employees and get a W-2 and a check. And so I deal with a very small part of society. Right. And even the people who are listening to this are one of those smaller parts of society. And that that means they're 24 hours out of the day. They're driven 
to drive revenue for their business. You know, you're gonna sleep for six to eight hours, you're gonna work out or traffic for another three to four, and that leaves all of us about 12 to 16 hours to generate revenue. And that's a different mindset. And so the key is to be around other business owners who have that mindset. They're the ones who can refer a website person. They're the ones who can refer payroll services. They're the ones who can refer other things because they know exactly what it's like. So for me, I get my energy and my mentorship from business organizations here in Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta Business League, the Black Chamber of Commerce, um, um, the um, Georgia Minority Supplier Development uh, Council, um, the Russell Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. I mean, there's a lot of organizations here that are centered around other business owners. And even me, when I came into the bottled water business, it's easy to say, well, I've been an attorney for 20 years. I know what I'm doing. No, I had to go to the beginning of the line like a five-year-old and say, okay, how does this work? And you know, what do I need? What is a capability statement? There are all these things that you need as you grow your business. And being around other business owners is the best advice I can give someone else. Of course, you have mentors like SCORE. There's an organization and nonprofits organizations out there that can help you with your business. But I think taking being around other business owners and just asking them about how they're handling the different issues. And you it's amazing uh, how much insight you can get from them. And most of us are willing to share because we got the battle scars to prove it and go, OK, if you're going to do this, do it this way, not this way. So I would say to anyone, you know, get into an organization that has other business owners where you can sort of share ideas. Um, as you get higher up, there's CEO table events where CEOs, you know, congregate among themselves and cry on each other's shoulders about, you know, their issues in the company. But I think staying inside of an organization that has other people who have like-minded ideas and staying in that two to eight percent um, of people who are trying to do this like you is the key. Mm -hmm. And talking about that, getting started and just uh, uh, going back to the head of the line and step one. Uh, so much of what seems to confound entrepreneurs are chicken and egg problems. Uh, mm -hmm. you, need, you need buyers, but you need supplies. You need revenue, but you need cash flow. You need all of these things that seem circular sometimes, where, where to get started. What would you all say were your first concrete steps towards building your businesses? Uh, Bob, or David, if you'll take this one first. Yeah, sure. Um, I kind of see owning a business a little bit like the circus act when the person's spinning the plates, <laughs> right? Is that people always ask, well, what's first, second, third, fourth? And I say, all of it's right now. It's just about how much time you put in each one. So sometimes people will come to me and say, Dave, I spent two days looking up uh, the differences between the LLC and a corporation. I go, what, what for? That's something I could probably decide in about 15, 30 seconds. So you have to be conscious about your time and say, OK, I have to work on my business plan. I have to set up an LLC. I have to do a bank account and spend 15 minutes on each one each day, as opposed to trying to do them all in one day. And you'll start to see like the gears of an engine, like they all start to fit together. Like once you have your LLC and your EIN, now you can open up a bank account. Well, you got a bank account. Now you can take investors or you can sell products. I mean, it all starts to flow together. And so trying to realize that everything has to be done now. People will say, when should I think about trademark now? When should I think about investors now? And just move everything a little bit every day, as opposed to spending all day on a business plan. You know, <laughs> So for me, um, one of the basics, basics is to form an LLC and get a tax ID number or EIN and open up a business bank account. I mean, that, that's when you're in business, right? And the LLC allows you to have your born on date or your birth certificate for your business. And your EIN from the IRS allows you to have a social security number, like, right, for your, this is like the social security number for your business. And those two things, you're in business. Now, what service or product you're going to offer, that takes work, you know, and that, how are you going to get money in the bank account? That takes work. But that's sometimes one of the stumbling blocks that kind of gets people started. But you're right, it is a circular argument because all of a sudden, you have a guy saying, oh, you need to outsource things you don't understand and go out and find contractors to do your website. You're like, but I don't have any money. <laughs> so it's like, it all comes back to money. So um, one of the things that I like to you know, offer to everybody out there is when it comes to money, um, you just really have to answer four questions for investors. And investors can be anybody from your mother, father, cousins, to coworkers, to angel investors, institutional. They all want you to answer four questions. They want you to answer one, what do you do? Uh, number two, why are you good at it? <laughs> number three, how much money do you need? And then number four, 
What does the investor get for it? And I think that when people sit back and answer those four questions and they write them down after they learn them verbally, <laughs> you write them down, that's the makings of a business plan. And that's how you attract investors. So a lot of times people are afraid to go to their family members about uh, money for to start their business, but that's because they haven't prepared. <laughs> you're afraid because you know you haven't prepared. Like anybody who's in the public speaking knows when you talk about things you're not sure about, you're not going to sound very good. So what I tell people is take the re time to research on how much money do you need, meaning that a lot of times they'll say, I need about $50,000. And I'll tell them, well, if I wired you $50,000 tomorrow and you have $50,100 in your account, what would you do besides press F5 a bunch of times to make sure it's there? <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of them will say, well, I'm going to go find a location or I'm going to go look for a person that does this. And I would say, well, to an investor, I want to put that 50000 back into my account until you go and find those things. So I tell them, spend like you have the money in your account so you can start to be ready. And the more prepared you are, the more investors are greedy and it triggers their greediness factor because they know it's going to happen with or without you with or without them. And that's what investors want. They want. They don't want to help you. They don't want you to be ignited by their money. They want to know this is going to happen with or without me. And so therefore I want to jump on board. And then of course, figuring out what they get, that might be a little bit more complicated. <laughs> sometimes it's a promissory note. Sometimes it's shares in a company that you might consider an attorney to discuss, but all the makings to get your business started is right there in front of you. You just got to have the confidence on how to put it together. Mm -hmm. And that kind of brings to mind one of the things one of our previous speakers, uh, Moses Harris of Wells Fargo said, uh, which was when you're, when you're drawing up that business plan, plan to have a little while without some revenue, plan to work off of savings, uh, work off of family borrowing for a while, uh, and that it's going to take some time for the business to start being self-sustaining. And if you aren't ready for that, you aren't ready. Very true. Bobby, does that track with what you've learned uh, yeah, in the so, business world? Uh, yeah. So, you know, like David said, it all boils down to the one key ingredient that's financing, financing, and financing. That, mm -hmm. that really is, uh, you know, it's, it's the core of all this. And, and it's the toughest piece to land, let's be honest. Um, in the case of like apparel, our cycle is a lot longer because it's everything is pretty much imported. So, manufacturing overseas, whether it's China, India, what, whatever, say. Uh, the cycle takes a while, um, so it's it's something you need you need dollars to spread out for a while, and it's 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 very hard because you have to give when you're starting on business, nobody's going to give you credit overseas. You have to pay for the products upfront. They take two to let's like, say a deposit when you place the order and balance when the goods ship. So that's about two to three months of manufacturing time. Then about thirty days on ocean transit, and then when you get the goods get here, you ship it to. The, your customer, like city friends, like 60 to 90 days of payment terms. So you're looking at a good six, seven months before that money rotates back to you. Mm -hmm. So it's tough. It's very tough initially. And how do you, um, one way to uh, ease, out, ease it up is I found was I started using a refactor when I started out. So the minute I ship the goods to, let's say, city trends, they let me borrow 85% against my receivables. Let's say if I ship you 10,000, they will let me borrow 8,500 against it the day I ship the goods out to you guys. So that saved two to three months from the time the payment comes in. And there's a surcharge for it. It's not, it's not that crazy. It's, it's nominal in the big scheme of doing the business. And that helped me a lot. Uh, and, and you kind of build upon it. And then you go through a couple of these cycles. And then you finally start to build some equity in the business through the profit you make. And that the, the refactoring and borrowing against my receivables helped me a lot. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, initially you have to plunk down the money and, you know, you have to sit through the cycle a couple of times before you're a little liquid. So it's, it's not that easy, but again, depending on the industry we're talking, depending on the item we're talking about, power takes a little longer. You know, mm -hmm. that's not the case in case uh, David's case, because it's a quicker turnaround. So oh, no, it's still, I apologize. It still has its challenges. Oh, no, 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 of course it does, but I'm just saying that the yeah, yeah, yeah. My no, it's nowhere near <laughs> shipping it from China. That's for sure. Yeah, I agree yeah. with well, you. Especially these days. Yes. We have nightmares going on with that right now, with the whole ocean freight jumping up six times, you know? Um, so, you know, every aspect has challenges and you just got to learn to work through them. That's it, you know, uh, but finding mm -hmm. things is the key. Yes. And, and if you're going to go out for investor, you got to make sure you have a solid business plan, a very solid one. You got to put a lot of effort into it. So I would highly recommend that. Bobby, what would you say were some of the best decisions you made early in? 
going to the trade show, meeting city friends, <laughs> number one. <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah, uh, definitely the trade show helped in, in, in the sales aspect. Um, but in terms of um, uh, sourcing and everything, that took a while. It, you know, you, you got to weed out the good, bad suppliers. And a lot of times you learn it the hard way. So, uh, yeah, you have to make instinct decisions and stick. And I was fortunate enough. I got some good suppliers. I had some bad ones too. I'm not going to lie. But uh, it's, 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 a, it's a weeding out process. It's, it's a trial and error process. So, and it takes some time. So, like I said, it's a roller coaster. You know, it's ups and downs. So. But I think uh, the trade show is definitely a great, great idea. That's why I keep going back to it because I think that's the best way to meet the buyers and showcase your product and have a face-to-face -face conversation because uh, doing it over an email... Uh, as opposed to a live uh, can easily sway the other person's mind when they get to see the product itself and they can touch and feel it. So um, any, any uh, entrepreneur starting out, I would highly recommend finding the right trade show uh, to get out there. Mm -hmm. in terms of and maybe you don't think of it as a decision as such, but uh, you, you're prepared at, the, at a minimum to have some some learning experiences, some painful yeah. learning experiences. Really. And Whether positive or negative, you get it right there, face yeah. first, you know. And 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 you get to see a lot of product under one roof. You see, you you see, you get to see where your competition is at, and whether you're in this mix of things or you're way out of league. And uh, so you get to judge a lot of different things in the span of two to three days when you're at a trade show. <laughs> David, what about you? Uh, any yeah. any? I would say uh, hiring the staff. <laughs> so. You know, a lot of times when people um, hire, they think of like, okay, I'm just going to run an ad in the paper or um, Indeed, et cetera. And they get a very generic sort of job description. But my, my feeling is that um, when we built Starwalker Industries, our brand's integrity and positivity are the characteristics in which we wanted to exude, not just to our customers, but also within our staff. And so we were very purposeful and intentional about how we listed our job descriptions we were very transparent about what size company we were, what we were looking for, and, and what our culture was about. And when you want everybody to feel like they're talking to Dave Walker every time they buy a product, you got to make sure your staff feels that way. You got to make sure your staff is buying in to what you're doing. And so some of the best decisions I made is the people around me and being able to empower them to do their jobs and give them a license to be great and to go out in an agency to represent the brand. And it's not easy to find the right people who believe the same things you believe in, but we have a fantastic staff who go above and beyond. I was able to take a vacation for a week where I literally had no cell phone coverage and no uh, email uh, coverage for a week. And they did a fantastic job and things popped up and issues popped up and they solved them. And when I came back and, you know, the company was still alive and, and working and, you know, those are the kind of things that as you grow your company and you start to make decisions about engaging contractors and employees, you have to be intentional and you have to set the groundwork for what you're going to um, expect and also what they can expect from you. It's a two-way street. So uh, hiring and the hiring decisions you make is some of the best decisions that I've, I think that this company's made uh, here at uh, Starwalker. Okay. And that's a major growth moment in a business. Uh, can you speak a little bit to how you knew when you were ready to grow? Was there anything that told you this is the time to uh, take it to the next level? Oh man, <laughs> it's still <laughs> happening by the moment. <laughs> um, it's, it's a, it's a yo-yo. It's a game of jump rope. And, you know, there's two people on the ends swinging the jump rope and you're trying to figure out, is this a good time? Is this not a good time? Is this good? Is this a good time? And, um, I don't know. Some of it is instinct. Some of it is planned. Um, but you sort of get to a point where you have to do a cost benefit analysis to the money. So like in small startups and we call mom and pops, when they sell a product, they take the, 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 the proceeds of the product, they buy some more and they put the rest in their pockets and they lived and they live in a small closed loop system in which they won't be able to hire anybody because they're living off the money that they're making. And so that's what they're called mom and pops, right? Is that they're, there's, they're making their salary off the products that they're having. To truly move to a growth level, you have to sacrifice. You have to say, okay, of this money I'm making, I'm not going to take any of it. <laughs> I am going to find other resources or find other ways. And I'm going to put this money back into the business. And then you have to make sure what you're investing in is going to make more money than the money you put in it. 
So if you got $10 and you put it somewhere else, you got to make sure it's going to make you $11 or $12, right? So uh, people is one of the ways to um, invest in your business and grow is to find people who can help you think like that. Uh, you have to invest in them because they're not entrepreneurs either, though. They want their money on the first to 15th, no matter what. So you have to make sure that you take your the money that you're making and you have to make a decision. Every time you get a check from somebody, you have to make a decision or, or credit card or whatever. You have to make a decision on how you're going to apply those funds. Me, my business or growth. And I've chosen growth from day one is I always wanted to put the money back in. Now, I'm a business attorney. I have a separate practice that generates income for me and my family. So yeah, I maybe have a little bit of an advantage there, but that wasn't easy either growing my law practice and hiring a law manager and other attorneys. So um, I think that, you know, one of the things that you will find is if that you're stressed out and you feel like you're in a, on a rat race, you probably, you know, need to look at a growth model of saying, how can I get other people in here to do this? And the key though, Mary, is that if you do free up your time, how do you become more efficient? Because you're like, okay, I don't have to do the books anymore because I hired a CPA or I hired a bookkeeper. The question is, what are you going to do with that time now? Are you going to do like Bobby and say, well, with this free time, I'm going to go to a trade show. Are you going to do something to advance your business? Or are you going to go finish that Netflix series you're watching? And, and in business, it's hard because there's no boss, right? There's mm -hmm. no one t making us, like holding us accountable. The, you know who holds you accountable is your bank account. <laughs> and if your bank account says it's not good, that means you're not doing a good job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being efficient uh, in your growth model is very important is to try to figure out uh, when is the right time to take money and put it towards uh, growing? And when is the right time to sort of squirrel up and save? Some businesses are seasonal like ours. So you got to try to make sure you implement strategies that match when your growth is going to happen. So in the spring, we typically hire people in the spring heading into the summer, right? So it's all about finding that right timing that makes sense for your business. Okay. Bobby, uh, what have been kind of the growth milestones in, in your company as you've uh, yeah. developed? It's it's all about timing. Like I said, I agree with 100%. Timing is everything. So I was fortunate enough when I started in this business, the whole streetwear scene was taken off. The whole urban wear was taken off. And uh, I was happened. Fortunately, I was in the right place at the right time, and it, it was just insane. I mean, we just kept growing, and uh, and I definitely did keep reinvesting into the business. I had to because in order to achieve the growth, there was no other choice. You have to reinvest every penny back into the business, and uh, it was a great time. And we were just going shooting up like crazy. I mean, business was phenomenal. Uh, you couldn't keep product in stores. I mean, we were just shipping, shipping, shipping. You know, it was it was a great time, and uh, you know, you you could literally bring in anything and it would fly off the shelves because the street was so hot. So, uh, so that, so like I said, timing was great. And uh, I did reinvest everything that I made into the business in order to fund the business and make, keep it growing and uh, didn't took hardly think anything out. And that helped me tremendously. Uh, but again, bottom line, timing, timing, timing. And I was very fortunate to be in the right place at the right time. That's, that's excellent. We hope that there's something out there that we don't even have on the radar that hopefully somebody <laughs> in our audience is looking at and thinking there's a niche. Yeah. But talking about time, if you had a time machine and you could go back to uh, the Bobby Johar of 1996, right. what would you tell them that you wish you'd known then? Um, I would tell any budding entrepreneur that, listen, when it when it's gr the growth is going up, it's great, but you gotta be prepared for when it comes down. It will come down. I hate to say this to you. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it does come down. And hey, it'll go up again. But you gotta be prepared for when it comes down. That means whether having a safety nest or whatever you want to call it, um, you gotta have it there because eventually it will happen. And not to say it's not going to go back up again. Like I said, it's a roller coaster. It's like a bell, you know? So you have to be prepared for it. That's the, I think the most important thing. When, it's good, when the going is good, it's great. Listen, listen, you, you're like plucking away, shipping, 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 this, that. But when the tough time comes, that's when the, the, the real, uh, the test come, uh, comes, it falls in your lap. And you, you got to be able to survive that. And unfortunately, I've seen a lot of companies that were not able to survive it. And whether it be increasing the overheads in the time of growth, going crazy with the overheads, expenses. Those are the key, key things you have to watch out for, overheads and expenses, because when, when, when it does slow down and eventually everything does slow down, um, you got to make sure you got to make sure that 
you're strong enough to survive that slow slow season and that's the key i think and i was able to do that fortunately and that is so true even even at city trends scale uh, we we plan for what are we going to do if and when uh, the, the market cycles in the other direction uh, we we look at our overhead we we take that into <laughs> careful consideration and it's it's paid off for us it makes all the difference i mean you can look out now in the business news and see retailer after retailer after retailer uh, closing stores and going dark and declaring bankruptcy. Yep. And we're going the opposite direction. You know, I've always uh, I've always said that uh, all the retailers, City Trends knows this customer really well. Yep. And you guys have a very, very, very loyal customer. And, I, you know, uh, I've, I've gone down to a bunch of city trend stores and back in the days when most of your buying off was in Savannah, I used to be in Savannah once a month. I think I've been in every restaurant in Savannah at least a couple of times, you know, but you guys have a very, very loyal customer. And if you keep giving him, her the right product at the right price, they will keep coming back in every week after week after week. And that's, that's the reason, uh, that's the basis of city trend success. And uh, you guys have not wavered from it. Uh, and you kept you stayed loyal to your customer, and the customer has returned that faith. We plan to keep it up. Yeah, <laughs> David, I know the time machine dial yeah. for you and your business doesn't uh, turn back quite as far as it does for Bobby. No, yeah. If, if I had a time machine, I'd go back and grab Dave by the collar and go, "You don't have enough time." <laughs> <laughs> so I think when I first started off, I was like, "Oh, try this, try that." I would tell him, "Do it, fail quickly, and keep moving." Like you don't have <laughs> enough time to sit here and think like that. You need to just keep going faster. And I'll say your future Dave is telling you, you don't have enough time and I'm already seven years in the future. <laughs> and so <laughs> if you're out there, you're sitting there thinking you don't have enough time. You need to start to practice, try things, break things. We have a, a model in here when we get a new software or a new idea, something we call break it. Like the sooner you can break something and get in and figure out why it doesn't work, the quicker you can fix it. But sitting and thinking about it and taking a little bit and doing here, I'll tell myself, it's going to work. You just don't, you don't have enough time. Try it, get it out the way and move forward as fast as possible. Well, speaking of time, we're kind of running to the end of ours, uh, but I would like to ask uh, each one of you, if you have anything that you'd like to add that I haven't asked about uh, or that you think that uh, our audience needs to know. Uh, David, if you'll uh, lead us off. Uh, yeah, sure. I think you covered all the really good points. It's a lot to absorb, you know, um, as a business owner, you're starting off, you're trying to take notes on what Bobby's saying and what I'm saying. I would say give yourself time and freedom to um, absorb things in that it doesn't all click at once. You know, it, some things you picked up today, if you picked up one lesson from today, it's a successful video watch. You're not going to be able to go back and implement everything that we've done. I mean, you know, Bobby's been doing it for a couple of decades and, uh, and uh, me with City Trends has only been a, a couple of months. But, you know, we all got to this point uh, by giving ourselves an opportunity and space to grow and space to learn. And so when you're learning, you don't have to learn everything. If you took one lesson from today, you did a good job for yourself and you did a good you spun that plate today really good. And so uh, be proud of it and then advance on it tomorrow. Well, I just want to say one thing to any budding entrepreneurs out there, you know, um, if you have a business idea that you feel very strongly about, I say, go for it. I mean, you're never going to know if it's not going to work, if it's going to work or not, if you don't go for it. Don't be hesitant. Uh, I mean, do your due diligence, obviously, the proper business plan, like we went through earlier in the session, uh, make sure every angles are lined up, but you got to give it a shot because if you don't, you're never not going to know if it's right or not. Uh, so I, 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 I highly, highly, uh, strongly recommend, I had this hunch, I went for it and thank God it paid for me in, in the long run. Uh, but you know, if it, if I didn't, if I didn't follow through with it, like I said, I was a banking and corporate finance major, you know, if I didn't follow through with this, I wouldn't be sitting here today. So I, I gotta go for it. That's, that's all, all I can say, you know. All right. Well, thank you all both so much for making the time to sit with us today and uh, talk to the next generation coming up. Uh, look forward to hearing back more from the two of you and from uh, our listeners and uh, get out there. Start start spending plates, as David has put it. Yeah. All right. right. Thank you. Positive, positivity. Thanks. All. Yeah, good luck to you all. Take care. Bye bye. 
Thank you for joining us for this session of the City Care Small Business Academy. This presentation has been prepared by City Trends and Seifarth Shaw for informational purposes only. The material discussed during this webinar should not be construed as legal advice or a legal opinion on any specific facts or circumstances. The content is intended for general information purposes only, and you are urged to consult a lawyer concerning your own situation and any specific legal questions you may have. Please leave any questions or feedback in the comments section below. For more helpful links and more episodes, please visit the City Care Small Business Academy YouTube channel.